Hello everyone, welcome to episode 33 of Court of Swords. It's another week to see if Max is going to die. Now I can start saying that because I'm level 5, so Max can die every week. It'll be great. <laughs> it's now safe Now the threat Max is uh, that's less severe. Yeah, you sound a little <laughs> sick, Max. Was that you? Uh, yeah, it's me. It's just stupid. I'm not actually sick. Oh my it's just God, fucking, don't get me uh, sick. What the fuck? No, 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 I'm not sick. It's, it's Dan was just I'm sick for like sick, a month. Don't, don't get him sick. No, yeah. um, it's fucking allergies. Since everything's uh blooming and like you know starting to like wake the fuck up from its its slumber, it's yeah. just pollen and everything is in the fucking air and it's yeah. driving my allergies nuts right now. I so. hate that. Hate that. Is it raining a lot on the West Coast right now? Up and I mean, it's always raining in Seattle, so that's a pointless question to ask Dan. But like, what's the weather like <laughs> in San Fran? Yeah, I mean, we did have that drought for a long fucking time, but now at past months, like we've had plenty of rain. Like it's been off okay. and on, but we've had plenty of rain. There was like a week solid where it was just raining constantly. Yeah, the, the oak pollen hasn't hit San Antonio yet, thank God. But it's probably coming. Eventually, it'll be here to destroy everyone's cars and their yeah. allergies. It'll be great. Uh, that'll be yeah, good. I, I was like, why the fuck am I waking up going like, <laughs> like fucking. Do and it's sleep? funny, too. Well, it's not funny. It sucks ass, but like, <laughs> I'll be fine. <laughs> I'll be fine. And then just like, you know, I can open up the door to let Mal come out or something like that and just get hit with some pollen. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, <laughs> Like yeah, horrible. And he probably <laughs> brings it like in with 10 him times in a row. He probably brings it in with him too when he goes outside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah most definitely. Yeah, so you should just get rid of Max or the dog. Actually, the dog should no, just, just get rid, get rid of, of Max. Max. Yeah, just yeah, just tell the dog to get rid of you, Max. Yeah, <laughs> just let tell the him dog to live there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just let him live in your house. Why should he have to suffer? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, I got an allergy pill, so whatever. Fuck it. Did you get a Claritin? What what what's your allergy? That's uh, Allegra. 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 Is that like Clarity, Claritin Light? It's like Claritin. Are it's Clarity Light. It's the same. They're the same like uh, active ingredient, right? Yeah. I always recommended Allegra by, I don't know, my, my sister-in-law who's a nurse. So, whatever. Oh. Sorry, I'm messing yeah. I, this chair. I'm not used to this chair yet. It's fucking odd. Honestly, it's probably like any other medicine where some work well for you and some don't. Just depends oh, they're on actually that. they're actually different. One's uh, fexofenadine and the other one's loratadine. I was going to say, when you said they were the yeah. same thing, I no, think they're, they're different. That's different. why she recommended That's it. Why. But yeah. Huh. I've only ever uh, had Allegra, Claritin. Allegra is the little tiny one, right? Like it's a little tiny pill. It's not super. No, no, no. I think that's Claritin. Claritin. That's Allegra Claritin. looks like this. It's the kind of yeah. beige. It's the little one that works for me. The other one totally doesn't. Yeah, Claritin. Yeah. Hmm. Claritin, Claritin always like dried me out really bad. Like if my nose would start bleeding a little bit because it would be super dry. Really? Let's yeah. get dried out. Yeah. Up. Are you taking that with an energy drink? No, it's coffee. I have water. What? An aluminum I want to can? show you the assortment of drinks that I have. I have Crystal Geyser water. This is the show now. Uh, yeah. What's on your desk? Double shot espresso. Oh, that's an espresso. Okay. And then Soylent. Nice. You're very familiar with this. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also have. You. <laughs> I also have one hey. of <laughs> no, I've got Soylent too. It's open. <laughs> Sorry open to anybody right that now. just tuned in. <laughs> I'd like to say the show is not normally like this, but it is. Yeah. It is. The first 30 minutes are always like this. What's on your desk? Yeah. Oh. I don't have anything exciting on my desk. Uh, oh, sorry. Espresso. I triggered somebody by saying espresso. Oh, I have a vehicle I mean, one, registration. One of those is the correct pronunciation. Mm. One of them is not. So that's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, you went to Australia land. I did, man. I did. What Though was only, that very, like? only very briefly. Uh, I was gone for four days, uh, two of which were traveling. Um, it takes 24 travel hours to get from Vancouver to Sydney. Um, so it was a, a full day there and a full day back. And then I was there for 48 hours, more or less, like mm -hmm. Monday morning and Friday evening and Saturday, Sunday for the for the conference. Um, it was good. It was really good. Uh, it's It was fall there, so it was really nice out still. Um, it's fall there. Oh yeah, their seasons are switched, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, their stars are all fucked up too. I like I got Wait, there and I, I like looked at the night sky because you're you're on the other side of the planet, so like you're looking at constellations. Hold, all on, hold on, hold on. You can look at the stars and know that they're fucked up. I just look at them yeah. and be like, man, those. <laughs> I guess those are stars up in the you sky. Can't, like, you can't see the same. You don't see the same constellations, right? Because there's the Southern Cross instead of Polaris, and I, I don't know. I, I guess like, I need to go look at the stars a little bit longer. I don't think yeah. if I don't think I could point out a single star 
or a difference in stars <laughs> if I was anywhere. You couldn't point out like the Big Dipper if you saw it or the Little Dipper? Yeah. No, probably. Not. I could make some guesses as, I as could do, with their names. I could do three constellations maybe. I could do the, Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Orion's Belt. That's probably yeah. it. <laughs> three. Yeah, Orion's uh, Belt, he kind of just choose three stars though. and say, that, You know, that looks kind of belty. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's probably a little weight. It's a little wider this year. Yeah, it's a little yeah, it wider this year. Bigger. Yeah. 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 I could not do that. I guess yeah. I need to study the stars a little bit more. I think, you know, I think maybe that going to Australia would be different uh, if I was going there from America. But as I mentioned before, it's pretty much just hot Canada. So, mm. yeah. Well, did you see any kangaroos? I did not. Did you no. see any big will, spiders or anything? Like everything, anything crazy? Everything in Australia, all of their like town names and train stops and stuff they all have really silly names like wagga wagga and like yeah. like it's it is it's a cliche but it's true like everything has a really silly sounding name which i'm pretty into That's there was a happy. petition to have uh i don't know if it was, how serious it was but it was i know the there was a petition that had a certain amount like a decent amount of signatures to change their uh their money the dollary dues <laughs> 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 which i think would have been fantastic really? wow yeah <laughs> Nine hundred dollar dues. How many dollar dues is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Wallamaloo. Like, there's a lot of a lot of silly names for things. But otherwise, I mean, it's it's very much just a kind of standard Commonwealth country where everybody speaks English, and yeah, not not too uh, not too different traveling. But I will say this: spending forty eight hours of of a four day period um, on a plane is a total fucking nightmare. Yeah. I got home. I got home last night, and like. My ears were ringing from just the sound of the the plane for so long. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's not even like the jet lag or anything. Not the time difference that that makes it weird. It's it's just being in one place in a tiny little box crammed full of people. Um, yeah. And I uh, I watched you, you did that thing where and I'm sure this happened to anybody who's gone on a plane where I, I like watch movies just because they were there. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, is that mm -hmm. a movie about the guy? Oh yeah, I saw your tweet. I actually have watched this upcoming movie as well. Yeah, so so I I watched uh, I watched a bunch of stuff. I rewatched like one of the Harry Potter movies. I watched that Founders. That's a solid choice. Donald's. I watched uh, Passengers, which okay, yeah, ugh, that's a Man, terrible it's, movie. Oh, it. It is not a good movie. Was it's, that the one with uh, what's it? The two it was. It was a movie that was just like yeah. Star Lord and the Girl from the Hunger Games. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. Let's Those take two. the biggest stars and put them in a piece of shit script and see if it makes money. I think it made money. I'm sure, it did. God, the script is just so so bad. Yeah. Like just fuck. Ugh. Isn't it crazy yeah. how that can that kind of shit can get made and it still gets the big Hollywood budget with all the CG and everything looks pretty? I, I, like I really want to, I really want to talk about why I think it was bad, but it's like, it's a spoiler why it's so it's bad. It's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Um, it wasn't but yeah, really, good. really terribly written, and it, it came out around the time when like there are much better sci-fi movies like coming out. Like uh, yeah. Arrival came out around the same yeah, time, yeah, yeah. and that was so much better. I heard that was actually pretty decent. That movie tripled yeah. its budget, by the way, according to the chat. <laughs> Fuck. And that budget was probably pretty steep because it had two of the fucking biggest stars I right now in Hollywood. Yeah, the, the majority of the budget goes towards uh, paying the actors so they can get big, fancy actors, and then also um, marketing and advertising, right? Like Let's, millions yeah. and millions of dollars just to convince you to go yep. see this movie that made makes it so expensive. Its budget was $110 million and it made $302 million in the box office. Well, I watched it on a plane, which I felt was appropriate. Fell asleep partway through. Woke up, rewound. Wish I hadn't watched that part again. Yep, pretty bad. Don't watch it. Go watch something else. Michael Both Sheen was good in it, though. I was glad Michael oh. Sheen was in there, the bartender. Those yes, yeah, he's he's quite good. What else is he in? He's in Masters recognize... of Sex. I've seen him. In Probably something not something that... you've watched. <laughs> it's actually quite good, though. I would recommend it. Um, that, that, that part, his part, uh, is an homage obviously to, um, the shining, right? Um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. like his role in that is a less like, again, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but has some connection to the bartender in the shining. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's great. He's a great dude. Um, he's good. but, uh, the rest of it was, yeah, real, real bad. You guys ever watched the original arrival? Not, they didn't have any connection. The original arrival with, uh, Charlie Sheen. Back oh yeah, yeah, with the, where the fucking the the little black kid, his legs like fuck up and like go backwards. 
So we're there are about? several people. The alien race that's I just that remember at the end, that. it's like the big fucking giveaway, and the guy's like standing on the mountain, and he just goes, Roop! and fucking just walks off. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is this movie? That's such a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the movie I was thinking of that Michael Sheen was in was Tron Legacy. He's caster in that. Oh. That's, I was, that's where I recognized him from. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I do remember that yeah. now. Also, yes, that, that, that black kid does do that. He does, yeah. That movie was kind of cr- that came out when I was in middle school. It was kind of scary, kind of spooky. Alien I was balance spooky. this out as the Hispanic or Mexican guy laid scorpions in that lady's hotel room. Mm-hmm. Also was an alien. Yep, that's the thing that happened. Yep. That's needed to balance it out. You know what I mean? It's true. It's true. And, and- the white chick. No. <laughs> Dan, you watch anything recently <clears throat> that we can pick apart and tell you how you have bad taste? Uh, or good taste? I haven't seen a movie in a long time. I rarely go see movies. Really? Not a big movie guy? I love going to the movies. Are you going to see like, Guardians of the Galaxy? I love going to the movies, the... I just never have time to do it. Are you going to see Guardians of the Galaxy 2 this weekend? I yes. want to see it. I'll see that one. Oh, you are? Yeah, that the big easy. Marvel ones I usually I've seen, like. If, the last one I saw in the theater was Ant Man uh, for Marvel, and that oh. was pretty good. Ant Man was pretty good, yeah. Yeah. I heard it was good, but for some reason I wasn't really like. It's like the funniest one for sure. I, I rewatched. I rewatched Iron Man again on the plane. The first Iron Man. Yeah. Man, that movie came out a long ass time ago. Nine years. Like today, actually, it came out nine like, years today. Like at the beginning yeah. of at the beginning of the movie, he's he's talking to somebody on his phone, and it's this like weird like flip phone. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. wait, is, is this it in the past? It's, like, it's, it's nope, a it's Sony just... Xperia Play phone. <laughs> Yeah, with a sideways screen. It came yeah. out a while ago, yeah. yeah nine years totally today, true. I'm not making that up. Yeah, he makes a point. He, he does a, the selfie with a soldier, and he's like, don't put this on your MySpace page. And I was like, aw. Yeah, yeah, MySpace. yeah. Aww, how cute. <laughs> I saw the MySpace, MySpace guy recently in a photo with someone. The I mean, Tom he's doing guy? fine, I'm sure. He's probably, yeah, he probably made a couple hundred million. I read, so, somebody mentioned him to me on, on Twitter the other day because I had tweeted, I was like, if I was independently wealthy, I would just buy a ton of expensive camera equipment and just travel the world taking pictures of stuff. And somebody was like, that's his life now. That's what he does. And I, like, I went and looked into it and yeah, he just like goes to expensive places and takes pictures of things and flies around the world. And I Speaking guess Speaking of happens. expensive places, Adam, you'll be into this. In Japan today, they launched the most expensive uh, train. It's nine thousand really? dollars a ticket or something like that. Uh, wow. Okay. Where are we going? Like I how think far it's, distance? It's like it's overnight trips from Tokyo to some Japanese place. Well, that's <laughs> just they, ridiculous. I can't remember. So, Japan's not so that specific. goddamn big. It starts with an H. The island of Hokkaido. Does a train run from Tokyo to Hokkaido? Well, t- Tokyo's a city. Hokkaido's the island. It would be like a Tokyo to Sapporo train. Mm. Where the beer comes from? Adam? Yes, it is. Yeah, they know. also invented. They also pretty much invented ramen there. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got. I really want to go to Japan so bad, but I'm not going to ride a nine thousand dollar. Talk more about. You don't that. want to ride why, the nine thousand dollar. Why is it so expensive? Uh, it's just stupid. It's like when you're like they have it's a luxury. Yeah, luxury they have. Uh, they have like people come out and play the violin and shit while you're sitting there and. That type of sprinkle shit. some truffle oh, dust. Oh yeah, you. yeah. I heard about this. Yeah. So JR JR Rail uh, has this yeah this special train, and it, it does it does stop a, a bunch of times along the way. Um, but it's super expensive because of the in, the inside of the train is like, uh, it's a thirty four passenger train, and it has its own little like library yeah. and like lounge. It's got a room cedar and bath looks, in every room. Yeah, it, it looks like a fancy hotel. Um, Hakodate, mm. Hakodate was the H name thing that's you were thinking of. That's one of the Hakodate. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know, it was, I know it was something like ho- hockey. I'm not making fun of hockey. No, no. I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's just funny because uh, it, it reminded me of uh, of playing Persona and everyone on that's like really bad pronunciation of Japanese names and words. Or like yeah. every time someone on TV talks about the Yakuza. Yeah. Like, oh, no. Yakuza. Not the oh, Yakuza. The Yakuza. The Yakuza. Yeah. Yeah. Yakuza. Exactly. Actually, about this, Dan, I did see a tweet. You had ramen, like restaurant ramen for the first time the other day. <gasps> yeah, it was really good. What What did you like, put in there? I had like a pork ramen. They had like pork, pork and a bunch of veggies and stuff in there. And it was really, really good. Yeah. But and the noodles are actually thick and good, unlike the instant crap. Oh, yeah. It didn't taste like cardboard. It tastes like actual noodles. And yep. yeah, it was great. 
Yeah, they I are actual ramen, noodles. Ramen is literally my favorite thing to eat of all time. Really? Period. I've been I've it's been to good. I've been to every ramen restaurant in Vancouver. Uh, when I went to New York, we went to six ramen restaurants in like five days. I, yeah, it's I can't get enough of it. Give me that delicious ramen. The, the last time I had, and this is gonna sound totally name droppy. The last time I had ramen was in Anaheim. There's a, or was, I don't know if it still exists. It's in the back of a, a grocery mart. And all of the Blizzard employees go there like once a week or went there once a week. And so I had ramen there. This is like five, 10 years ago, maybe. Or it's not 10 years. Like five or six years ago. I was going to say 10 ago. years is quite a while. <laughs> yeah, it was like five or six <laughs> years ago. Uh, and I had ramen with like Mike Morhaim and a couple of the other CEOs. And I was really weirded out because one, I didn't know how to act around them. And two, I'd never eaten ramen before. So I didn't know mm. what to order. And there was like this weird pink thing that had like white pink thing. Adam, what is that? Not, like, not, so it's, it's, it's called Naruto. Uh, it's a fish cake. It's there's anime in my ramen? <laughs> no, the guy's <laughs> named after the thing. Oh, is um, he? Yeah. Uh, so what's funny about those, yeah, the little Naruto fish cakes, um, the way that they like the way they slice them. That's fish. Um, yeah, it's like a mushed. They they put them in these like. They, I didn't need. I didn't up. like it. I didn't need it. That they part mush up the fish with some other stuff, and then they extrude it through like a long tube, and then it it, it solidifies and they cut it into slices. Um, I thought Naruto I, was just a made up name. I didn't know that was an actual thing. Naruto Maki. That's oh. uh yeah. It's the thing you you slice. It's supposed to look like a whirlpool. Yeah, I thought it was like going to be a sweet candy, so I didn't want that in like a savory <laughs> dish. Yeah. So I just left it out. I actually took it out with my fingers and because I can't use chopsticks, took it out with my it's fingers and left it on the side. Essentially, like kind of fish spam. Um, I think you either really like it or really don't. I think it's good. But. Huh? So yeah. pork ramen. I kind of want some ramen. What? Which ramen? Which ramen place did you go, Dan? It was a local place uh, near where I live. Uh, it wasn't a chain, you know, like it was local. What's the, name, what's the name of it? I gotta look it up. Well, he's not gonna say. He said I, where he lives now. He's not. Yeah, it's a local place <laughs> yeah. near where I live. Skype lives. it to you. Message it to me. I wanna, I wanna look it up okay. later. Oh. It's called Dan's Ramen Shop. All right, that's the name. <laughs> yeah. You fucking jerk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have some more ramen. I don't. There's probably like good. two ramen shops in all of San Antonio. And I was going to say, in San Antonio, like, you, you could probably find decent ramen, maybe. They probably it's put probably like, going to be harder to find. Yeah, they probably put like as... refried beans or something in the ramen <laughs> to make it taste terrible. I don't know. Apparently, I'll have to find something. Apparently, the good place to go. You can tell. So here's, a, here's one way to tell if a ramen place is like decent or not. If they sell anything other than ramen. Yeah? Yeah. Because yeah. like, like if it's like... Ramen and sushi and tempura. And sushi. Wait, I actually exactly. think you're like no, no, you're not a ramen restaurant. You are a Japanese restaurant, and your ramen's gonna be bad. Um, but Hold if you on. can find a place that just does ramen, uh, then you're you're oh, much okay. better. Oh no, this place does wings. This there's you a know, place called Hot Joy in San Antonio that's supposed oh, to be pretty good. Joy. But they do Hot wings joy. and stuff. What else do they have on their menu? Let's see here. Uh, oh yeah, they have like edamame and green beans and cheeseburger spring rolls. That sounds Americanized as oh, fuck. This this Kimura Kimura place seems pretty good. Where's that's in San Antonio too? Mm hmm. I'll have to look. I'm also it. thinking about all the people that uh in in chat. Like when you said like if, if they don't serve if they serve more and like if they have sushi and whatever the ramen is gonna be garbage. A bunch of people are like. Mm -hmm. I like my ramen place. <laughs> Someone in the chat said hot Kathy and it made me laugh. So I just want an option. Hot dog, Kathy. So, where yeah, is I mean, that from? You... Get, is that South Park? Where is that from? Hot ca no, we invented that. That's Did we? That's okay. Yeah. God, that's, that's why that's us. so funny to me. From what? I kept trying to think what fucking hot Kathy <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, who's hot Kathy? Hot Kathy oh. is from it's a mirror shades joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the thing about ramen is that, that I, I quite like um, is that it's basically like fast food. It's Japanese fast food. So like in Japan, it's it's pretty cheap, um, but there are a lot of sort of fancy like ramen places here. So you can there's a, a, a variety of different kinds of ramen places. And like there's so many different types of ramen that you can go to a bunch of restaurants and they can all be really different and they can mm -hmm. all be good in, in different ways, which is really sweet. Um, but I love it. I love ramen. It's my favorite food for sure. I need to eat some more ramen. I haven't yep. had it in like like I said like five or six years. 
Well, next time, next time we're we're co-located, next time we're like at a con or something, I'll find the best ramen joint and we can go get some. We can go get some. I want to go to yeah. the ramen places uh, places in Japan where you can't talk and you sit at a table by yourself. Yeah, those seem That's, like the I best. Mean, yeah, basically, like because it's because it's fast food. You go in, you you often order from a machine. They don't have like waiters because it's just like a six seat bar in front of the place where they make the ramen. You put some money in the machine. You press the button that you want. They give you a little. It gives you a little ticket. You pass it across the counter to the person who's making the ramen. They take it. They make the ramen. Put it on the counter, and then they don't. That's it. You just eat it and you fuck off. And the tables aligned sideways because you don't go there with groups. You don't want to look at the people you're eating with. You go there by yourself. You get your food. You eat your food. And then you leave the place where they made it so that someone else can come sit down. It's perfect. It's great. <laughs> Sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's the way it should be. Can you talk to the waiter? No. I, no the, actual the chef? No, Don't do that. Conversation. Why, they're, they're, they're busy. They're making ramen for you. No, the, the waiter. There's no, there is There's no, no waiter. waiter. Oh my God! I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a machine that you just push. You're like, I would like tonkatsu ramen with a side of ajitama and, and uh, puts it up extra there. sprouts. And then you get the little ticket and you give it to them. They make it. They give like, it to you. Eat your then, shit. Yeah, eat the dakimasu and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, Sounds lovely. that's great. The type of ramen I had was tantanmen. Tantanmen, okay. Tantanmen. Cool. Did tantanmen. you get it? Was it spicy? Spicy. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of the spicy. I'm not. I don't. I don't spicy spicy life myself. But yeah, tantamen tends to be um, pretty. Pretty you hot. Like me some spicy, spicy. I had broth. it. I had it two days in a row. I tried the number really? one the first day. It was like, <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. It's not that spicy at all. I'm like, I'll try three. I'm sure it's fine. Tried three, and holy crap! It, my mouth was on fire. If you and get then, if you get I, some ramen properly, spi- like if you tell them like, yeah, I want it really spicy, they'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let me let me tell you a story. So we went to we went to this place. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but we went to this place in um, Rapungi, I think, that uh, there was like a turtle soup ramen place, and their jam was that it was turtle soup and that it was spicy as fuck. So the first time we went, uh, I'm not, I, I never went over like a three, but my friends are, are insane. And they were like, the first night they were like, oh, we'll go, we'll get five. And they're like, this is pretty spicy. We went back next time. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna get a 10. And the whole rest of the night, they were just like, like sweats and like going blind from how hot it was. They're like, 10? it's good. Yeah. Like the, the spiciest they made it. And it was just like nuts hot. Yeah. I, I would, uh, zero is where I will stay. Right. Yeah. I tend to like um I tend to like the uh like shoyu or shio ramen rather than the the hot stuff. Um a good like suke men is it's where I'm at cuz I'm the same. I don't really like spicy that much. I do like the suke men as well. Mm-hmm. Suki men? <laughs> mm. I, I don't know anything I like what them to be a little sense. spicy if you Su- know what I mean. Suke men, suke men <laughs> is like you get a you get a thick broth on the side, and you get cold noodles, and you dip them in the broth. And then when you're done the noodles, you can either order more noodles, or you can get like hot soup water to put in it, and then you drink the broth like it's soup. It's great. Hmm. Yeah, tends to be a little spicier. You seem uh, to know your ramen. Maybe we uh, maybe I, I should I make you take me to a ramen place. <laughs> I know a lot about ramen. <laughs> yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to go to a place where you're like, yes, this place is good for ramen. I like seeing what other people like as as far as food, especially food that they're passionate about. You know. Yeah, I should try that. <clears throat> Guys, we got five minutes, six minutes to fill. What are yeah. we doing? I mean, we don't have to fill. We can just start. no. We need to fill it. Talk about D&D. anything. D&D. If we do, what do they serve for during d- the first thirty minutes? Is Fuck. dessert a thing that's uh, served at ramen shops? Do you get dessert no. ramen? Do they like serve you some noodles with ice cream and chocolate sauce? It's some ramen. Some ramen places will do like matcha, matcha ice cream, or like. Um, the the like sticky rice the sweet like sticky rice stuff but um generally not not really um there isn't like a dessert ramen though there is like summer ramen which doesn't have the hot broth it's just noodles and uh chilled pork and like some other stuff oh. vegetables mm. how do you feel about mochi imagine mochi. replacing the broth with like Thanks. chocolate sauce and then yeah like, dip and stuff in that that's what i'm good. saying man yeah. It's American gross. ramen, yeah. American ass ramen, right there. Do they even is yeah. is dessert even like a big thing in Japan? Uh, yeah, you like sweet sweet stuff, sure. But I, I don't know that like thinking of it as like the post dinner course is like necessarily mm. a thing. That's that's a pretty Western idea. Okay. Yeah, but there's lots of stuff like you like Max said, like mochi or whatever. Yeah, mochi's like the little cake things, right? So I went to it's basically uh, just a dough ball. 
with rice, rice cream in the yeah. middle. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to a place in um, God, what neighborhood was in uh, Ikebukuro that did uh, it was called King Kong Ramen, and their tsukimen was a like blueberry citrus broth. So it was like kind of dessert. It was like slightly sweeter that than. Sounds really than, weird. It's kind of interesting. It's super weird. It was really good though. Um, yeah, it's the only it's the only ramen like that that I've I've ever had. I tend to go for the like more traditional stuff. But if you're you know in Tokyo and they're like, here's a weird ramen place. To bring this back to Australia, is there any Australian like? Does Australia have a dish? I know they have a beer, obviously, but like, is there a dish that Australians are famous for? Vegemite. I was gonna say I think people go for Vegemite when yeah. they think of like in food yeah but they don't they don't you don't go to like a nice ass restaurant and they serve you vegemite right australian cuisine like like a black angus or something or like hmm. let's see australian what did you eat while you were in did you go to like mcdonald's or where'd you go um i went to i went to a ramen place because i was like i'm okay. in sydney what's the best ramen place in sydney yeah. um it's, it's pretty <clears> good <throat> sydney, you need to up your ramen game um and then I just ate like a dinner near the convention the next night because oh, okay. I was too, too busy early. And we were we were kind of outside Sydney. It was like a forty minute train ride. So Tim Tams, yeah, that's another Australian thing. Those are pretty good. What but is no, Tim Tams? They're like a it's like a candy. Uh, they're like cookies, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah, those are pretty big exports. From it doesn't uh, um, Australia doesn't strike me as a place that I like. I don't hear about like man this Australian cuisine. This There's happen. a um what is it? Not a top chef. A uh, one of the Netflix <clears throat> shows has an episode where they go to Australia. There's a chef down there. It's doing big things, but wait, I'm not wait. saying that there isn't great food there. You could probably you could find great food anywhere if you look hard enough, right? Yeah. Uh, you need to tell me that Outback Steakhouse is not authentic Australian cuisine. That's the one I was thinking of. Outback Steakhouse. Damn it. Listen, they got these Barbies. Is that, you put shrimp on them. Is that even owned by an Australian? Did an out did a <coughs> Australian even start Outback Steakhouse? I bet you it didn't. I bet you it's like I, <laughs> I bet you it's I would a bet, Japanese I would bet if guy. It did, if it was, <laughs> they don't anymore. I guarantee you, it's like some USA corporation. Oh, he probably, probably runs it. other restaurant nope, chains. It, yep, yeah, it's an Australian themed, <laughs> yep. based in Tampa, Florida. There you go. That's where they're based. Well, that's where their headquarters are now, right? Founded by, uh, yeah, founded in Tampa, February oh, okay. 1988. Oh my God! Four Americans. That blue yeah. onion, though. I've had a blooming onion before. It was actually. I'm not above uh, eating at an Outback Steakhouse. All right, I'll just put that out there. I'll do it. Look, not a blooming onion is not it. bad. It's not bad at all. Sometimes it's not bad. You know? Where I grew up, that was fine dining. That was like the nice restaurant. Yeah, I remember when the blooming on onion came out. And everyone was like, "Oh shit, look at that onion! It's fucking huge!" And then they were like, "And it's." 1700 calories or some crazy shit and i was like damn but then we just kept eating it and now 10 years later we're the fattest country in the world got some really good sweet potato <laughs> shit too they have sweet, sweet potato, potato stuff apparently outback steakhouse owns two blimps really really yeah the bloomin cool. onions one and two. Oh, that makes that's sense nice. i mean that made outback steakhouse that's that's the number one item there that also sure. sounds like like uh i don't know like a fake sports team that would be in like the simpsons the bloomin' onions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bloomin' onions. I'm trying to think if there's anything else from Australia. So you didn't like see any crazy Australian shit? Like any um, the fucking thing, the thing monsters about Australia, or Godzilla the thing about or anything? Australia That's, is yeah. that it's pretty much the same as like any kind of western like Sydney is like any other western city, except that uh the trees are all really different. Like they're they're southern hemisphere trees, so they're they're pretty like weird and different. Um, the birds all sound crazy, like they're just yeah. crazy like bird birds. Noises like everywhere. what do they what do they sound like? I'm not gonna. I'm not. Gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna, asking you to make sound the sounds. Like. I'm, I'm well, asking like, like why like, are they different? They're just really loud. Um, they're more like more like jungle birds uh, in yeah. terms of like oh, their okay, calls yeah. and stuff. Like there's the whole kookaburra thing, and like they, they make a ton of noise. Um, so they're they're the flora and fauna are both really different because different hemisphere and what have you. Yeah. Um, and uh, the toilet flows the other way around. So there's that. Coriolis yeah, effect for a little bit. is reversed. Yeah. Honestly, all I know about Australia is that episode of Simpsons. So I don't okay. know. They'll kick Did you in the you play Knife and Spoonie? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is probably not true at all, but I have to ask. Do they have like nets around the bed? 
Or is that a? Uh, is that only not? I, 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 I slept in a hotel and not in a tent outside, so I didn't have to worry about that. Well, I've seen but... like uh, I, I had friends, Australian friends that lived in Australia, that they would go to sleep and put nets around their beds because spiders and stuff would crawl in, and they would wake up with like giant fucking insects on the outside I imagine, of the nets. I mean, I imagine if you lived in like the suburbs or something, or your house wasn't like weather sealed, or it was summer and you didn't have air conditioning, so you left the windows open and stuff, maybe. But yeah, I mean, that's true of like. It's fucking of crazy, man. Yeah. Listening to yellow-tailed uh, black cockatoo calls. Those bir- birds look pretty crazy. I like it. Is that a normal bird there? Yeah. It's a pretty extravagant think... name. It was... I did a Google search of... Uh, birds of Australia? Uh, Australian bird calls. And it's... I don't know what this... Ra- <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. Don't. Oh, it's top. It's top forty bird songs. <laughs> top birds forty in backyards. birds. And rank ten is the yellow-tailed black cockatoo. What's number one? Well, I gotta click the link further to find that one. He's got to wait. Go to page four. To All right. It. All right. It's the common coal or coel. I don't know how that's pronounced. K O E L. By the group the Sorrows. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, these are There's actual bands songs. That I thought do birds. I, I don't know. Oh, Max, Max has become lost on the internet. I thought these were this... actual birds. You're you're naming bands. No, 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 no. I think they're they're named. I, I'm very confused. But go ahead. Feel free to investigate yourself. I looked up Australian bird calls, and then you know how Google give you like a little like if you say define whatever the fuck, it's like hey, this is what that is. This at the top says top forty song list, and it's just oh, I see. It just top forty Google, bird Google songs, Google birds in backyards. Right. Yeah, Google Here's fucking link, Birds in Backyards.net. Well, they just got the most. Either views. way, the yellow tailed black cockatoo is pretty cool. Yeah. So they're okay. I'll go to the, I'll just go to the website. I'll stop asking any stuff. Let's <laughs> Adam start the show. I'm gonna investigate the website further. <laughs> I'm gonna go listen to Birds. Well investigation. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, I was gonna say this this episode, uh, kind of like the the last one, like you're you're getting settled in um, in Baya. You have a new a new place to live. You live in a, a new home now uh, in Devil's Cradle, um, amidst the other uh, scum and villainy of Baya Monastery. Um, so, I guess my question is like, what are you gonna what are you gonna do? Y'all have like a little bit of uh, time to investigate things or do what you want to do before whatever chaos Anne's character introduces to the game. So if there's anything that you want to accomplish now, now is the time. Um, Berg walks out oh. and looks for I have some, parts. I have some ideas. I have some, ex- some ideas about what's going on in the world that you can like run into, but I want to <laughs> give you an opportunity to, uh, you know, have, uh, have some agency. So I guess what, you, we spent some time last episode, if y'all will remember, trying to free uh, Berg from either his arm or his life or <laughs> his servitude. Last episode was a weird fucking episode. <laughs> All right. What? Well, it was normal. Okay. Hearken to the role play of old, where we just oh, fuck yeah. about for four hours. That's what we said yeah. we were going to do first thing today is yeah. to talk to a priest of... Uh, the, the priest of the religion that makes those things. Yeah, judgment. judgment. It was a rough time for Berg, okay? That's my peeps. Bunch of bird guys just walking around doing the bird dance. Weird fucking shit happened too. Berg's soul may or may not be trapped. Who knows? I don't. Well, we don't know anything about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you had a strange, you had a strange vision uh, during your near death experience. Um, a vision of the other side. Uh, so that was. I didn't yeah. like it. <laughs> no, no, I can imagine. So um, are we? Have we slept? Would you say? Do I get? Am I? I'm only asking because I want to change some spells around. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So okay. you, yeah, I was you, say too, yeah. we I mean, you were you were taken you were taken by the the major domo into Devil's Cradle. Um, you got a good look around at uh, the other uh, the, the sort of other things in the neighborhood. This is the heart of uh, Grasping Hands territory, right? The the twelve fold thirsty devils run this. I mean, they run all of like the lower town, but this is their HQ, and so you've been sort of embraced into uh, into their loving arms. Um, you've been given uh, a, a small little like a villa. Uh, you all have your own rooms. There's a, an open main room, and then like a kitchen kind of area, and you have your little garden outside, and it's all walled in by a, a low uh, concrete wall. Um, and then all around you are the buildings of the uh, of the neighborhood, and so you yeah you'll get a chance to rest that night. Um, Devil's Cradle is quite lively. Like all day and all night, 
So there's always the sound of you know people talking and and the sort of neighboring businesses. Um, it's a it's a lively part of town, um, but you're able to able to get some rest um, and uh, yeah and change up if you need to change up your spells or whatever. Everybody just go ahead and mark off your uh, hit points if you're missing any. And yep. uh, yeah, yeah, Max, and, you're missing some. Yeah, yeah, I'm back to 47 now. I was at 23. Yeah. Yeah, and you uh, you awaken the next day uh, in uh, in the new neighborhood and ready to ready to go. Um, so I guess maybe you're all like in your little like kitchen area, your your sort of dining space. Um, and uh, yeah, what do you what do you do? What's the plan? You can you can discuss and decide. <clears throat> um. What time I of guess. the day is it? Is it morning? We're just kind of sitting around. I don't, what time of day do you get? Do you traditionally get up? I oh, get up in the middle of the night because I have night terrors, Adam. Okay, all right, Berg. <laughs> <laughs> I get up real early because I gotta I gotta do my bird calls, my morning bird calls. Yeah, call those cockatoos over. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Uh, so I would say it's like early morning or mid morning. Yeah, I think Berg's on. sitting at like some breakfast table, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Eating whatever the fuck he, you know, we have here. Not just eating his rations. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you have. I don't. You, you don't have like food in your like larder or anything. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess. I guess we're like looking at the bracer and just being thinking about how we're gonna get it off. And th- we spent all yesterday trying to get this damn thing off your arm. And then yeah, like. So, no, I guess, Berg, I guess, uh, God damn it. <laughs> go ahead. Our timing is horrible. No, Dan, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go. go. Ahead. No, no, sir. Don't you, fucking start this. Sir. You go. No, good day, sir. <laughs> Listen, we don't have time for a Canadian standoff. Move along. Oh fuck, really? He's all right. So Berg basically just looks around and says, looks at his bracer for a bit and just looks up at uh Azrael and is like Well, what's the plan? Shocking me didn't work. Well, Yesterday, Gail mentioned that the temp- the Church of Judgment makes these. Perhaps they know how to unmake them. Maybe. Where is the nearest church that would help? I think they're all in the upper level. We could go up there and see if they have a shrine or a temple to judgment and ask someone there. Let us hope they don't have my image. I look at I look at Gail and like, do you, do you have the ability to speak today if we need you to, to them? Uh, I turn to, to Dan and answer in his voice and just say no. Okay, well, I think you and I have been together long enough that I'm, can pretty much understand what you're saying most of the time. So I'll translate for you if you need me to. I give a bird talon up. Um, then I I want to grab the bracer once again with complete disregard for the fact that there's an arm attached to it Berg's probably grown accustomed to this as I just reach for your bracer once again and just pull your arm over (laughs) slightly annoyed whatever yeah does it have like a clasp on it Adam or is it it completely it appears to be Solid. Yeah, it appears to be one one solid uh, object. And it was never like, uh, there's there's not like it hasn't been like welded together or anything. It's just one solid ring. It appears to be, yeah. Even on like the uh, the outsides, the thin pieces, there's it's one also, solid. I mean, there's no there's no there's no like thin thin pieces exactly. It's just like yeah, a single piece. Like it's a manacle, so it, it appears to be a single piece of uh, um, like a brass or bronze material. Um, around uh, the end of Berg's arm. Is there a place for a chain to loop into it? No. Okay. I just throw it off. <laughs> throw the arm away from me. Take another sip of whatever I'm drinking water. See anything you like. Uh, uh, once again, in Azriel's voice, I turn to Berg and say no. <laughs> I'll just take no. Nope. Well, perhaps we should go up to the upper quarter and ask these priests if they know how to remove this or know of someone who does. But in yes. a vague or a vague way, then 
we're trying to break this off your arm because you're an escape slave. Uh, are we? I would okay. I just want to walk out to the front of the house and like open our gates. Mm -hmm. And just look to the left and right. Is there like a signpost or anything <clears throat> that has a wanted poster of Berg right outside our house? Uh, no. This 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 neighborhood isn't isn't friendly to things like wanted posters. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. So you you come out to the you walk through the garden and push open the the circular doors of your house. And then the, there's this long winding street beyond. The streets here are quite narrow, uh, and you can see across the way. Um, I think your nearest neighbor is a. Um, there's like a couple of little little bars. So there, two of them are shut for the for the night. They've they've been shut. One of them is just still open from the night before. Uh, there is a uh, couple, uh, a man and a woman sitting at the the counter, and then there's a, a bartender um, behind them. And the the man and woman at the counter are in the middle of playing some kind of game, and they're having a quiet conversation. Uh, I think they look over and then look back down at the game they're playing. The bartender, um, uh, young. Like, early 20s uh guy uh he uh he just gives you kind of like a wave um uh, across the across the street um there's some quiet foot traffic uh this road isn't wide enough to bring a wagon um and uh, you can see above you there are a lot of uh like this this area has um uh, several stories so there are like clotheslines uh, draped across the the thing you can see the sky but there are clotheslines and in some places uh, little wooden like bridges between two windows is it going to cause alarm if I just start flying right now? Um, I mean, you look like a bird, so flying is probably not that like incongruous. Probably like, I guess that's true. All right, all right. Uh, I want to uh, begin flying then, and just go up to the top of the <clears throat> top of the building in front of me, whatever the tallest building is. Sure. Okay. Yeah, you you fly up on top of the. Uh, the little like district and you can see yeah everything out in into to a fair distance uh this little neighborhood this area of the neighborhood all of the roofs here have uh, these sort of like red shingle um like tops and uh yeah and you can you can kind of make out the edges of the district because of that um you can see the market uh off to the west uh you can see up in the mist the um the monastery and you can hear from here the uh the dawn bells of the abbey uh high above kind of ringing out quietly through the fog um, you can hear uh, people moving around and kind of windows opening uh, and the the smell of uh, of people's like breakfast uh, sort of wafting up into the uh, into the sky around you. Uh, <clears throat> can I call on my background to see if I can pull any uh, birds out and intercept <clears throat> messages of the criminal underworld? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not like a cell phone, right? Like I know, you're... I'm just I'm just asking you if there's any birds that I can intercept right now just to get a gist of what's going on. Uh yeah, I mean it depends on uh I guess let me let's look at that ability. I want to I want to double yeah, check I'm, the I'm wording going to it right now. Okay. Uh just so that we've got cuz it's like you have a you have contacts, right? It's criminal contact, yeah. Uh you have the reliable and trusted with the contact who acts like your liaison to the network of other criminals. You know how to get messages to and from your contact even over great distances specifically, you know the local messengers, corrupt ca caravan masters and the CDC others who could deliver messages for you. If you okay. had to describe the sort of bird that you're going to intercept, would it be a pied kurawong, <laughs> a noisy miner? Noisy miner is or, the one that, okay. that comes on okay. uh, today on Tuesdays. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So I think I think your actual contact is probably someone who like trains uh, and like sells these like birds, um, and you're able to uh, to recognize and and call them. Um, I don't know. What do you? You're just trying to like. I just want to see thing, what like, the criminal world's up to. <laughs> yeah, by 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 reading one message at a time, right? Like you you could intercept a message, but it's not going to give you a, a fuller idea. Right. Um, you could spend some time, like if you spent the morning kind of like picking up clues, uh, that, that would be a part of it. Um, you could make a roll and we could, we could yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, make a, make an investigation roll. All right, so, so Berg and, well, while he's getting that roll, <clears throat> Berg and Azrael, um, Jubilant Black Ale, uh, leaves the, leaves the apartment, goes outside and, and then like disappears, uh, heads off to, to do some things. He didn't even say anything to us, right? I don't think so. No, not at sort of all. Did his own thing. Uh, I guess Berg regards him as he leaves and just like, what? What is he doing? Who knows with him? He just runs off like a wild <laughs> animal. Um, like a bird person. 
<laughs> Good job, Berg. Some kind of man bird. Uh, okay. All right, so you're going to spend your morning uh, investigating um, and you got a 19, so that's good. That's a good, uh, that's a good roll. Um, what kind of information are you looking for? What, like, what uh, questions? To of? see if there's been anyone paid to find Burke. Uh, I mean, yeah, totally. Like his, that, that his... might be occurring today or, or just any information that I could. Um, scoop up. yeah, I mean, you, you know that there have been. Um, over the past few days, uh, and, and I'll let you decide if you want to connect these two things. Um, there, uh, there are, uh, lots of armed visitors. Uh, some people differentiate between you and them, but most don't. Um, there have been flamboyant individuals, uh, members of the, the violent adventurer underworld, uh, who have been coming to town lately. Uh, they are filling the, the tea houses and noodle shops of the lower district with their boisterous attitudes and weapons. Um, there have already had several fights break out. Uh, the purpose of their being here is uh, unknown, but the, the town is plagued. There's a plague of adventurers and... Um, and and only uh, only the gods know when it will end. Uh, these people are dangerous, even if do they do sometimes bring money into town. Um, lots of shops have put up signs that are like "No adventurers" or like "Leave leave your sword at the door." Like people are are nervous about these these armed visitors. Um, in connection with that, maybe or maybe not. Uh, yeah, I mean the the board in town the normally where where like a, a temporary workers can find uh, jobs you know people who are looking for long term work or, or just need to make some money people uh, looking to outfit caravans that kind of thing um, most of the jobs now have have changed to me, uh, to meet this sudden new influx of uh, violent individuals so now pasted over. Uh, hammered up on the on the job board in the market. Hammered over all of the like needing a carpenter or uh, looking for a doctor. I am new in town. All of those have been pasted over by like need someone to get my money back from someone who crossed me. Uh, gambling debt needing collecting. Um, my my cellar is full of giant rats. I need you to kill them. Um, and then bounty bounty notices. Lots and lots of bounty notices. Um, all for different. People, same people, yeah, same they're, they're Berg, a, same Orc. Same All time. 12 of them for Berg. <laughs> First one's like, Berg, get him. Second one, we really, like, seriously, get this fucker. <laughs> yeah, so so the way the way bounties work uh, in this world is that an individual places a bounty. That's that's all they do. They, they say, I am willing to pay money uh, to for the return of this individual. Uh, and then they go, depending on the country, and y'all are in kind of a nebulous gray area because the Court of Swords and the Court of Coins both claim ownership over this area. So legally, hard to say. In the Court of Swords, you can pretty much just put out a bounty on someone and be like, fuck it. If someone's willing to go and beat them up and drag them over here for me, cool. They get paid. It's a yeah. service like any other. The Court of Coins is a little more complicated, but uh, you, generally you go through law enforcement. It needs to be sealed by a, a priest, usually of judgment. Um and uh, yeah, there, there's definitely like a, a, a one, you, not multiples, but there's definitely the, a, a Court of Swords uh, bounty order placed on Berg's head. You, you find that stapled to the, to the board. Um, and uh, yeah, there's also, I guess with a 19, you also would notice that um, there is a, uh, there's a work order. There's a, a, a note here that says, um, seeking talented individuals willing to undergo dangerous tasks um, loyalty valued, high pay, and there's a there's an address, and the address is in uh, Devil's Cradle. Okay, I'll just grab a bunch of different one of those, especially specifically the ones dealing with Berg, and the one that you just said as well for the uh, the one in Devil's Burrow. You said when you go to when you go to reach up uh, to take the to take the one with Berg, we see your little talon reach up for it, and then a big like armored hand thunk like drops on the board over top of it. Whoa. Um, and we, we pan up the arm and yeah, there's a dude in, in like plate armor, not like medieval knight plate armor, but, um, more like, uh, we, we've looked at some of these before the sort of Chinese, uh, like plated, like lamellar. Um, yeah. and he's got, uh, he's got a big long, uh, sword on his belt, uh, a pouch of, uh, a pouch of coins and a helmet with a, a red plume. Uh, and he's, yeah, he's just like slammed his hand on top of it and he's looking down at you. Um, do you say anything? Uh, I don't move my hand. I just turn my head. Does he say anything to me? 
Uh, I kind of let it linger for a second or two to see what he does. Yeah, so he, he closes his hand around the bounty notice and that, that like tears it free of the nail that's got tacked up to the board. And unless you like pull on it, he, he takes it away from you. Um, I'll definitely pull on it and then turn to him in grasping hands voice and say dangerous. Uh, he looks down at you uh, and so you're, you're both holding one end of the, the bounty and he, uh, <laughs> he says, uh, yes, too dangerous for you, little bird. And uh, kind of gives it a tug. Like, this one's mine. Um, I'll first laugh like a child. It's one of my go-tos. Um, <laughs> and then... Uh, in grasping hands voice again, I'll say, as you say. And just kind of like, let go. Okay. Uh, he, uh, he grins. Uh, and he uh, and he nods. He says, uh, "A smart choice, this one." And he like just at you, this one we've heard things about. Very dangerous. Best to keep clear. And he's like folding it up and he tucks it into his uh, into his armor. And you didn't notice her before, but there's a woman like standing behind him. Um, she uh, she has like pale kind of ice blue skin, uh, long white hair, um, and then like these long beautiful like ornate robes. Um, and, uh, and a scarf that's sort of like fluttering. There's no breeze, but her scarf and her hair are kind of like blowing around her shoulders. Uh, and the scarf is marked with, um, like pl uh, prayer calligraphy, like all the way down. It's like a long prayer strip. Uh, and she, she was just there. Like she just sort of seems to appear and she grins at you. And then she says something to him. You don't speak primordial, do you? Uh, I speak Orin. Air elementals and stuff. Oh, you primordial. do? Okay. All right. So some of this, some of this you can make out, but the, she definitely says the word Kenku partway through the sentence. Um, the, the general, <clears throat> like her voice is a, a, it sounds like, um, like wind chimes. And as she speaks in this like melodious voice, um, she says to him, um, um, uh, something, uh, about you it says Kenku and then grins and he nods and, uh, the two of them turn around and head into the crowd. Okay. Um, and I think that as, as you watch them go, we see that crowded around you, um, not like around you all staring at you, but in the area, looking up at the board and having conversations with each other, there's a bunch of like generally just kind of like tough looking people, uh, everyone carrying, uh, you know, spears or uh, Xi'an like short swords, uh, wearing armor, like a good like two dozen kind of tough looking folk just kind of like gathered around uh, around the, the market entrance. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I will uh, just take flight, go back up, and return home. <laughs> okay. I do my Superman thing. Yeah. You neo your way out of there. Yeah, All right. I've gotten better. So I don't look like an idiot. Just flapping my wings, really confused. <laughs> Jumping a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? Um, uh, what have you, Azriel and Enberg? What have you been up to this morning while uh, while Black Yale is out there doing that thing? Um, I look at Berg's shabby disguise as we call it that uh gale piece together i'm like you know we're surrounded by shady individuals who might be better able to make something to disguise who you are perhaps there's someone here who could make a much better disguise for you yes this not the best and i guess uh we, we look around the square and ask around if uh, there's anyone that specializes in making disguises or costumes that could help oh yeah 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 iceberg totally okay yeah so i think that you um are you just gonna like go walk around and, and look for a shop uh i'm gonna walk around the devil's area to see if uh, anyone local so we don't have to leave the area if, if they have someone that's specialized in disguises okay yeah so you you find a there's a, a costume shop uh that uh, that sells outside you you walk past it and outside there are two Two or three, um, uh, like uh, mannequins, uh, dressed in very ornate-looking, obvious like um, costumes. One of them looks like it's from a, a, a court of swords, like religious procession. Uh, another looks like kind of a like a warrior costume, uh, and then a third is sort of a clown, like a jester outfit. Um, and, uh, yeah. And when you, when you walk in, there's a, a faint tinkling of, of bells over the door and the whole inside of this place, 
uh, has a uh, powerful, sweet, like, incense smell. And your eyes are immediately assaulted by just, like, swaths of cloth in various bright colors. Uh, there's a, a row of masks on one side, varying from the from the mysterious and scary to, like, kind of lewd looking. Um there are uh, there's you know brocade vests and uh, and robes of all, all types and colors and then a bunch of like prop uh, like weaponry and uh, and shields and at the back uh, you see uh, a man uh, he's quite tall uh, thin dressed nicely of course um, in a, a sort of uh, thin like voluminous robes he's got a, a, a turban um, he's arguing with a, a pair of t- really like tough looking individuals um, one is a uh, a broad shouldered uh, dark skinned woman um, with like swirling tattoos on both arms uh, she has a, a, a scale mail like vest and um, she has a like long um, like braided hair uh, and she's she's holding uh, what looks like a like a mesh bag full of like dead giant spiders, like big, not like enormous, but like you know football size. She's holding it and she's po- poking this rich looking guy in the chest, and she's saying something like, "This is not what we agreed to." And uh, next to her, there is a um, uh, a paler skinned uh, human. Um, he's got a, a long like waxed beard. Uh, his, he's got a, a hood on uh, and is dressed in um, like leather armor and he's just standing quietly behind uh, you notice that he's wearing like arms openly he's got a bandolier of knives uh, he's standing behind the, the woman and the woman is like prodding this guy and the guy, uh, the guy is like ah you fools I, I paid you for silk not for the carcasses these are the wrong kinds of spiders anyway and she's like well wrong kinds of spiders or not my friend got poisoned so you owe us, and he like she like pushes him, and he kind of staggers back into one of the uh, into one of the the closet racks, and it rattles. Uh, and then the tinkling of the door. Uh, who comes in first, Azrael or Berg? Probably Azrael. Okay. Think Azrael. I do. So they they all look. They stop their argument, and they all look at you. And the costume guy looks at you kind of imploringly, like, eh, "Good, someone's here to help me not get violenced." And the woman, uh, she looks at you. Uh, and she kind of half smirks and kind of half like gives you an up and down. Um, and you notice on her, uh, on her belt, uh, she has a, a short like machete, like a chopping sword. Um, and you see her arm, the arm that poked the guy like tense slightly. Like she's like, is this going to be a problem? Cause your arm too. Um, but doesn't immediately like draw it or anything. She's not like being aggressive. She's just aware that you're armed and she's armed and yeah. I, I walk in like. What seems to be the trouble here? And uh, she she looks you up and down, and she kind of like leans back, and uh, she says, uh, "No trouble at all, Tian Shi. <laughs> I was just uh, discussing with my employer, and she dumps this body of carcasses on the this like this bag of carcasses on the floor uh, when we were going to get paid for our hard work." Ah, uh, not wanted to pay the adventurers. Is that what's going on? Um, what is your passive perception, uh, Dan? Uh, ten. Big whopping ten. Okay, she has. Now that you're closer, um, she has. Uh, you know, she has like uh, t- like t- tattoos uh, on her face. Her skin is quite dark, so it's hard to see at a distance. But she has all of these like line tattoos, like under her eyes, and like sort of a swirling one on her forehead, going up to her hairline. And then the same on both arms. Like she has her arms uncovered, and they. She has this like very like sun darkened skin with like kind of whirling. Uh, tattoos and scars on it um, and around her neck she's like a simple uh, leather thong and at the end of it uh, there are some seashells and a um, a little bell with no um, there's a noise there's a name for the little thing that hits us out of the bell to make the noise but it doesn't have one of those and something you something tweaks in your head you're like yeah, I've seen that that bell before that soundless bell um, and then she she turns to you and she says um, uh, actually, she doesn't say anything. She lets her employer uh, say something, and he he's like, N- "No, that's that's not it at all." You see, I I'm trying to run a business. I, I make and he gestures around. I make beautiful things, and to do so, I need silk. But silk is dangerous to obtain, especially the kind that I need. And I told them, I told them explicitly what I needed. I told them where to find the spiders and how to claim their silk. I don't I don't need this mess. And like gestures uh, at the uh, at the the pile of now like dripping uh, spider corpses, uh, and uh, and he he says to you uh, he says, "You 
You're an impartial creature. Uh, Chen Chi, do, do, do something about this. <laughs> he kind of like folds his arms like, you know, you're, you're going to make it better, right? Well, 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 let me see here. So you worked tirelessly to bring these horrible spiders to this, this man. But they happen to be the wrong spiders. And, and in fact, you wanted silk. And you hired these people to go risk their lives for this precious silk, correct? And they, they, they kind of look at each other and they nod. The guy, um, the guy with the beard, just kind of like leans back against the. Um, <laughs> he leans back against the wall. Um, and let me, I need to roll something real quick. Uh, Berg, what are you doing while this is happening? I think Berg is like looking along, kind of regarding, you know, this conversation that's happening, but also looking along the wall and maybe like reaching out and like touching something that's like kind of shiny, you know, like, okay. like a right. really like sparkly, you know, I don't know, piece of fabric or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So the, the guy with the beard is just kind of like stroking his beard and, and like grinning slightly. <laughs> He's got this kind of shit eating like smirk on his face. Um, and then the, the, the woman nods and the, the employer nods and they, they both look at you. Uh, to to resolve the problem, but uh, I don't want to I don't want to get you into it because we need we need to take a break. So let's let's break here and uh, Dan, you can figure out how Azrael is going to uh, sort of Solomon these people. Uh, it's you need to resolve this issue for them apparently, <laughs> and we'll see how we see how we do that. All right, we'll think about that for a bit, Dan. We're gonna take a break. Still got three hours left to go here on Quarter Swords. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more. We'll see you then. <laughs> 